Okay. So I'm just going to jump right into it. And I just want to clarify... I'm good. As of right now. Um, it hasn't been easy. But getting through it, I guess. But... Basically... I haven't been doing well physically and mentally, mostly mentally. Um, obviously, it's not anything related to this site, since, you know, my upload schedule was already inconsistent to begin with, but my life over the past, I would say... Jeez. <laughs> Since at least 2018, 2019 has kind of just been ups and downs, and lately it's been mostly downs to the point where it almost stayed down. Um, I hope some of you guys can read between the lines as I go on and answer this question to the best of my ability. Um, this obviously isn't going to be easy to talk about. Um, there are some themes in this that I'd like to clarify aren't very safe, and so if, unless crying is your thing, I recommend clicking away now. But anyways, I guess we'll start around 2018, if I could write and draw an 8, oh my goodness, and right around 2019, we'll say, you know, I'm in school, college, and things were okay, for the most part, had some, jeez, how do I want to put this? Very interesting interactions with some people. Um, got into some fights with some friends that I've known for a long time. Some of those friends I don't speak with anymore. Some of those friends are still some of my best friends to this day. Um, but that kind of went downhill. I dropped out. Not the greatest point in my life. And I started working, and I had my first job right around, I want to say it was like around the end of 2019. It was like, yeah, it had to have been right around like 2019. I had my first job, and I was working, making fucking tacos at a Taco Bell. Uh, this is going to be a taco, and it's going to be a pink taco because I don't care. <laughs> um... But I was working at Taco Bell, and I would most definitely eat a pink taco, 110%, yep. But anyways, yes, like I said, I was working at Taco Bell. I was making fucking tacos. That is a very horrible bell, but we're going to run with it. And this is what I'm going to call the Dark Age 1.0. Um... I mean, it was an alright job. I was there for about, oh geez, till about 2021, I want to say, is when I, something like that, 2021, 2022, somewhere around there, is um, when I had left and moved on and worked in retail. Now there is a crucial detail that I have left out between here and here and I will get to that detail when that detail becomes somewhat relevant. End of 2022, roughly around the end of 2022, uh, until about not 2023, but until this year, 
I actually changed my job again and I was working at Dunkin Donuts and that is a very poor attempt at a donut we're just we're just gonna call it a Boston cream donut that's a that's a Boston cream donut yep sure that's a uh, that's a donut but I was working at Dunkin Donuts and yep totally a donut <laughs> um, but then unfortunately that didn't go very well either because they had done some shady stuff to get rid of me. I won't go into it. It's not super important. But here we are now. And I'm working at a job that I thoroughly enjoy. And that job is making subs at my local Jersey Mike's. That totally does not look like a sub whatsoever. We're going to attempt that again. D sure. Yeah, sure. That's a, uh, we're, we're, we're just going to write JM because I cannot draw a sub, but I now work at Jersey Mike's making sandwiches and making smiles. And it's a job I enjoy for the most part. It has its moments as does every job. Now, why is me just talking about my job history and all of this stuff? How does this all relate? Well, obviously, if we cut right into here, we all know 2020, you know, the greatest year ever. We are going to switch pens here again. But we all know 2020, you know, the greatest year ever. We all know what happened in 2020. You know, everyone got sick, you know, all that good stuff. 2020 was just an absolutely lovely year. 2020 was not, it was a good year for me, but it was also simultaneously one of the worst years of my life. The Dark Ages 2.0, we're going to call that. So this is 1.0, this is 2.0, and right now we are in 3.0. This is where we're at right now. But right around here in 2020, obviously, there was the pandemic and all of that crazy stuff. And it was just chaos and lockdowns and everyone's wearing masks. And it's one of the most terrible times in my generation's history. And da 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 And it's a huge deal. And something about a gorilla or whatever getting shot and that's what started it all or whatever i don't freaking know dude that was also a really horrible joke i know but all of that culminated into just a lot of things for me personally and one of the best things had happened to me right around here at the best but also worst possible time now what do i mean by that so obviously you know i was going through a lot of stuff going into this area and i just i i felt kind of worthless I felt like I couldn't do much. I kind of sat into a state of depression. And I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't thinking about something that rhymes with my channel name. If you can read between the lines there. And right around here is when those thoughts started to get a little worse. And things got a little more chaotic. But, well, this job was one of the worst jobs ever. It was also one of the, I would say, better things for me. Because one fateful day, right around this time, I just so happened to meet someone. In, and things were going good. I thought, you know... My life was 
going somewhere. I thought, you know, shoot, somebody actually thinks that I'm worth something. And this person knew me as the guy at the front counter at Taco Bell smiling. Because, you know, yay, I'm here, I love my job. And I'm totally not thinking about the fact that I leave in five minutes and my replacement's walking through the door as this person who I have no clue who they are is walking in after we just had a ridiculous rush because a sports team came in and here's me just waiting to get out of here and in my rush to get out of here lo and behold this person turns out to be you know someone that actually thinks I'm worth something and that kind of felt good and I'm pretty glad I didn't just bolt out the door that day and things were going pretty good at least that's what I thought so anyways you know this goes down and things are pretty difficult because I live here and this person that I just met lives all the way over here so obviously you know there's a little bit of a conflict because you know 2020 decided to happen and said nope you can't go here you can't go here you're gonna stay here and you're gonna like it and that was obviously just you know tough but we made things work we would i would you know go ahead and be like oh yeah i have to stay late at work today and ha ha ha, ha i'm actually here for a little bit or, oh, yeah, I have to go to work. And one of my favorite stories that my mom only just recently learned is, yeah, I am uh, working uh, late tomorrow, but then I'm going to uh, her place after work, and I only had to work a short shift, and I packed my stuff, and we went out of state. And I thought, I'm not even going to lie, I thought my mom was going to freak when I told her that story four years later, roughly four years later. And she was like, oh, wow. Man, that's kind of funny, actually. Like, she thought it was kind of funny. She laughed. She was like, wow, that's, that's pretty funny that you did that, that you went behind my back. And she was like, you know, it reminds me of me and your dad, you know. And she thought it was, she just thought it was funny that that happened. And, yeah, like I said, things were going great right around this time. And, you know, in terms of that, at least so I thought, and I'll get to that. But even though I was in this relationship and, you know, I thought things were going pretty good. I mean, you know, it was late 2019. Things started to kick off a little bit. You know, early 2020, you know, things kind of started getting a little serious it was more than just you know hey let's go get a coffee or hey lo let's go get lunch it turned actually turned into something and actually turned into you know arguably one of the better days and you know it was a day at the golden arches which although it was kind of ruined by you know lack of planning on my part things still you know were pretty good and you know what pun intended i was loving it but, you know, things were going pretty good up into 2021. You know, I thought things were honestly going great. 2022, you know, had some hiccups, but we got through it. And then, you know, the last, the last hurrah, I guess you can call it. There were quite a few bumps in the road. Some of them were almost managed. Some of them I couldn't salvage. And unfortunately... You know, between some broken promises, ambitious ideas from me, and just me being unwilling to just keep my mouth shut and understand that I can't be Superman the way I wanted to be, and just understand that how do I explain this in the best way possible? I tried to do so much, and in trying to do so much, I forgot to focus on myself. 
And I think the fact that I forgot to focus on myself is what led to it. At least that's the way I see it. I forgot to focus on myself. Something that I genuinely just still struggle with. And I, it's something I've always struggled with. I mean, I thought things were going great, especially, you know, in the long term. I mean, it wasn't even just like, oh my goodness, I met this person and, you know, it just lasted a while and, oh my goodness, it was heartbreak that was just going to go away. Like, when I tell you things were serious, I mean, like, things were serious. Like, diamond ring, will you marry me? Like, serious. And it was... At least for me, I thought things were going in a direction that was ultimately going to pay off in a family. In finding love and things like that you know and it just it all kind of came crashing down I don't know why I was about to draw a sad face because this is a very sad and depressing story I guess but things just kind of went crashing down over the last two year few years and unfortunately it, I will admit a good portion of it was my fault <laughs> and this all went down this year, in fact. Um, early in January, I thought things were going well. I thought things were going to be fixed. I mean, we were talking about going out of state for a few days this year and all of this other stuff. And the next thing I know, I get a text message. And that's the part that always bothered me. Is It's, too, it's twofold. Things were going great the last time I saw her. And then I, I, I didn't even get, like, the respect of, like, being told face-to-face -face or at least over the phone. It was the fact that it had to be done over text message. That's what killed me. And I got basically... I, I won't say I got zero chance to explain myself. I was able to explain myself, but I didn't feel like I was being heard. And I feel like that was a common trend throughout the entire thing, especially near the tail end, because that was a, a lot of conversations were, was the fact that neither of us believed that we were being heard. And it made things very tough discussing things when both of us f still kept feeling like we weren't being heard. And I, did, I tried a lot. I went to therapy. I talked to a lot of people. I even discussed certain things with friends and both sides of the fa of families. I tried so much self-reflection. I even delved into like the deepest parts of my mind and that's not a good thing. Um even during the relationship there was a time where my thoughts of that word that rhymes with my name <laughs> came into play again and it was very tough but being able to fix things when I did because there was a major bump in the road in late 20 or mid to late 2023 and I was able to fix it and I felt like that I did you know what was best I was able to fix things I was able to but ultimately I mean I'm on my end, there were a lot of broken promises. Promises that I should have known that I couldn't fulfill because of one reason or another, whether it was my own anxiety, my own depression, or the thoughts that were rolling in my head. Because, and this is something that I thought I brought up, that I thought would make things a little more understandable on my end, was that I have always had major trust issues and it was nothing anyone could have fixed it was nothing anyone could have just made go away these trust issues have affected so many people not even just like the person who i thought was the love of my life it nobody was safe from my trust issues my own family had gotten caught in the crossfire because 
my trust issues stem from a lot of people. Stems from old exes. Stems from school, just in general. Like, if I was to tell you, like, before this person, I had technically, I guess you could say, two exes. There's one that doesn't really count because it didn't last very long. We never really made it official. It just kind of happened. But the same time, when it, right around the same time when it kind of just happened was when things just also went south. But my trust issues came from these two people. I mean, I was cheated on. Now, did I think that this person who was the love of my life was just going to go out and fucking cheat on me? No. I didn't have the trust issues with this person to that extent at all. In fact, this was the only person in a long time outside of my family and my best friends, my two best friends, that I trusted would be loyal through and through. Like, I knew this person would take a bullet for me, and I would take a bullet for this person. Same thing with my two best friends. I would take a bullet for those two. And I know that they would take a bullet for me. Well, at least one of them would. Another one I don't talk to anymore, and we'll get to that. But, you know, things were just... I don't know. Things were weird for me with my trust issues and like I said a lot of people got caught in the crossfire and again like in school especially like I could not tell you how many times in high school that I was stabbed in the back you know lied to and just ultimately a lot of people tried to play these games with me in high school and these were games that I just, quite frankly, didn't want to play. I didn't care to play these people's games. And I've gotten into multiple fights. Only one of them were physical, thankfully. Um, in high school. Because of whether it was one of the two exes. Or it was from sports being, you know, track, of course. Which, I know that's a this is a very shitty looking track, but I can assure you it is a track. Um, I'm not going to try to draw a shoe, so yeah, track. Um, but I've had multiple people from the track team go ahead and stab me in the back. And it kind of stemmed from one of the exes. Or it just stemmed from school in general. Or whatever it may have been. I've had multiple people in high school stab me in the back, and I had trust issues because of some of those people. I didn't talk to some of those people. I made friends with people that I didn't think I'd make friends with because they were also victims of these people, and they were like, yeah, fuck this person. This person's terrible. They're a shitty person. Things like that. And it just, it all, all of this right here, and my trust issues have just gone chaotic. They've gone nuclear. And again, I did not... And I truly knew in my heart that this person, who I consider to be the love of my life for almost four years, I didn't think that they were going to do any of that stuff. In my heart, I knew that. But whenever... Things went sour right in the tail end. Those thoughts started creeping in my head. You know, am I going to get stabbed in the back again? Am I actually, am I, like, is this it? Like, am I really about to just fucking blow this? Like, this is, you know, and that's another thing, too, is throughout high school, I did fairly good. I was a little bit of a tryhard up until the end senioritis it's a real thing i can assure you but i went from doing pretty good in high school to just simply my parents were ready to kill me on the spot in minecraft of course gotta reiterate 
ready to take me out to Minecraft. But on a serious note, they were not happy with me. And that was a huge thing, but eventually, obviously, you know, I made it through and went from, you know, this angry and upset to back to being happy and things were good. You know, I made it through high school and I was doing all right and then I was off to college and then things were not all right and it led to this and uh, led to this. Now what's the point in me explaining all of this? How does this relate to why I've been gone for damn near a year? Throughout all of this, a lot more has happened in the background. A lot more backstabbing, a lot more losing friends, and a lot of personal failures. I mean, as of me recording, my birthday was not that long ago. I am 24, and I cannot drive. I have gone driving multiple times. I cannot drive because I don't have my license. Um, now, I have my own reasons as to why people are going to spin it a different way. But the way I have always presented it, and it's the I will die on this hill, is that at first everyone was on board, but then things just have gone south and everyone's availability has been lessened and therefore due to the weakened availability I haven't been able to go and now what other things could I be talking about well right around all of this range roughly and even still today um, a lot has happened grandfather is not doing well um, to put a long story short, there were multiple times, um, especially during 2020, 21, 21, 2022, where I thought I was going to lose my grandfather, and that would not have been pleasant for multiple reasons. One, I have always made it very clear I wanted my grandfather around until I was at least in my 30s, 40s, if he could help it, but I also want my grandparents and my parents to be alive whenever I get married. If I ever get married. So, you know, that was also another thing. So the fact that, you know, at this point I'm engaged and I'm thinking about planning a wedding, but also at the same time bracing myself for potentially losing my grandfather. <laughs> like, it just, it made life very, very, very difficult, and it just, oh my goodness, I just, I hate thinking about that, because that was a horrible time, and there are still times, even to this day, where I'm scared that I'm gonna be at work, or I'm gonna wake up to a text message, or get a phone call from my grandmother, or any of my family, hey, text me or call me when you have a moment. Because <laughs> usually that does not mean anything very good. Or they might just simply blow up my phone. Um, and that's not a conversation I'm ready for, especially now. Because, <laughs> like I said, I just, I need my grandfather a little bit longer. <laughs> and God, please let it be that I can have him just a little bit longer. But... <sighs> I told myself I'd not, I wouldn't cry when I got to this part, and I'm already there. <laughs> uh, just gotta laugh through the pain. That's what I've been doing for the past seven months. Or 24 years, if you want to be technical. <laughs> um, but there was that, which that was just, again, not helpful. But... I guess the long story short was this, there's been a lot of stress, a lot of things in life in the background that I didn't really discuss, and obviously there was the Lightning XZ and Friends podcast, and we would all get together, me and some of my friends, 
and we would just talk about whatever, you know, and it was a good time. We would sit there, talk, and again, you know, we were just having fun talking about gaming and just movies and whatever we thought was interesting. And I just, I had really so much fun with the podcast, but unfortunately the podcast had fallen through entirely. Another sad face, another failure. You know, to make a long story short, I don't talk to any of those people from the podcast anymore outside of one guest, one of those guests being one of my best friends that I've known since elementary school. One of the very few people outside of my family who have been around from the beginning, essentially. And... It's been this constant cycle for me, especially in the past two years, where I would have friends, new friends, come around for whatever reason. You know, when the Call of Duty League was announced, I made a lot of new friends. When Overwatch League was announced, I made a lot of new friends. And a lot of these friends I don't talk to anymore for one reason or another, whether it's simply they're just too busy with life, which honestly I can respect, or it's simply a matter of you're a crappy person, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Like, for every Billy over here, we have a Bobby. You know, Billy over here, he's a cool dude he's a lifelong friend someone that you know i would want to go out and grab a drink with where we have bobby here who i'm just gonna write bob uh, you know for every billy we have a bobby and bobby is someone who i don't want around someone who likes to say things about people and then expect those certain people to not hear about it and have to basically say say these things again and we're gonna have problems um and if you are one of those people watching this video i'm not sorry <laughs> for anything that i have said or done I, I hate to be that person in this video but if you're one of the unfortunate people to have wronged me and have been given the um, FAFO treatment, which if you don't know what FAFO is, it's F around and find out. Um, that is what me and my friends have uh, decided to call it when um, we decide to essentially exile somebody from the group for very serious reasons. Um, reasons such as being a PDF file. Um, yes, I do know somebody that is a alleged PDF file, and I wasn't going to take any chances, and we threw them out. Um, whether it's true or not is irrelevant. They've also done some other crappy things, which I can confirm, and I told that these people, you know, I don't wish to be around them anymore because of some of the crappy things that they've done that I know that they've done because I was there when they happened, goodbye. Um, and so we just, we don't have room for Bobbies, but Billy's can stay. Um, but then we also got, you know, it's just, it's tough. You know, like I've, I mean, just thinking about it now, like if I was to think of the five core people that are the biggest reasons why I am the way I am now from the past I'd say five years one of them I don't speak to because they were allegedly a PDF file and that day when I blew up on them for unrelated reasons I learned that the zero F's attitude that I have was 
something I should carry with me everywhere I go, and I still do to this day. We had another person who was just a terrible, terrible person, not because of anything that they did was just at that same level, but just they were really toxic, and I just, again, it reinforced my attitude. Another person who I can think of who I won't, again, I, I'm trying not to name any of these people, um, but this person I met recently, and they've definitely taught me that that word that rhymes with my name isn't necessarily the best route to go and that's a topic in of itself which i will get into here in a minute the other person number four was the love of my life taught me that life is short and that you cannot sometimes your ambitions need to be cooled down and that is something that i've learned the hard way unfortunately um, however, I'll also get to that here in a minute. But number five is, and this person I am going to name, but one of my good friends, Zoe, who I unfortunately, we, in the Lightning XC and Friends server, lost. Um, she was a charismatic sweetheart and... A lot of us were talking about getting together and actually all of us meeting IRL. And I made it very clear that I wanted to take a really, really ambitious road trip in the next few years. And I wanted to meet some of these people. And because I knew things or time was short, I made it a priority that she was going to be one of the first people I was going to meet. Because Zoe was battling the dreaded C word that nobody likes to talk about. And again, she was just an absolute sweetheart and everyone in the server loved her. And unfortunately, we lost her. And I just... I remember the day I found out I wanted to call into work. But my mother was complaining that I couldn't call into work, so I went into work and I almost walked out and had a panic attack. Because I was grieving. And that day, I learned two things. One, again, life is really short and it can be taken away very quickly. But I also learned what the word sympathy meant. <laughs> because... I got none because everyone's response in my family was you didn't know the person in real life they're not a real friend and I have a lot of online friends that if I met them IRL and there's one I have met IRL I would dap them up and we'd have a nice long conversation and I would even go grab a drink with them It doesn't matter if you don't know, like, this is the age where meeting people online and having, like, good be friends and, like, even best friends online isn't uncommon. Like, it's very common these days. But I got no sympathy whatsoever. Everyone just kind of shut me down. Well, no, I won't say everyone. A good portion of people shut me down. And I kind of secluded myself, and it was just, it was not a good time. And there are a lot of days where I still think about her. And I've thought about getting people together in the server, and, you know, but it just, it didn't feel right. It felt disrespectful, and I've canceled a lot of those plans, and I just, I keep her in the server, and she has her own special role, and... Zoe, if you're in heaven hearing this, you know, we all absolutely loved you, and I really wish I could have met you. You seemed like an amazing person during the Overwatch League watch parties, and just during your open mics when you'd pop in 
just to say hi and I, I miss our talks and the fact that I was able to be open with you and talk with you about anything like even though you were going through so much I still felt like I could come to you and talk to you about anything and you would be completely unbothered like I felt like I could come up to you and be like Zoe I really need to rant about something and you would find time for me even if you were on like your last legs for the day and you just wanted to go to sleep you still always found time for people and I'm forever thankful for every moment that I was able to talk with you. And I miss our late night talks together. And, you know, you coming up to me even in confidence talking about just whatever you want to talk about. And I really miss it. And I just, I really hope you're being treated well up there. Just like you were down here. I, I miss you. And if there was one person I could bring back into the server... It would be you. Even if I can only have you back in the server for 24 hours. Because there are so many people in this server now that I wish could have met you. <sighs> Try not to get emotional about this part either. <sighs> only a few tears. We made it through that part. But anyways. Time for the really rough part. <laughs> oh dear, I'm going to cry at this part. I couldn't cry about losing one of my good friends and I couldn't cry about my grandfather. I'm crying about this part though. I do not care. But in terms of the last 365 days, which is not probably not when my last upload was. I mean, outside of my YouTube shorts. Because um, I know I did upload a couple YouTube shorts about Rainbow Six Siege. A game that I don't play anymore, although Rainbow Six Siege, I would credit to, I won't say saving my life, but giving me a reason to not, you know, that word that rhymes with my name. That word. The, you know, YouTube will not let me say that word. So, that word. Um. But... I'd be lying to you <laughs> if I told you between January and now I haven't thought of or worse. This is the part where I'm going to cry. Um, but okay, where, where do I start? Where, where do I start? I don't, I don't know exactly where to start with this part of the story. <sighs> January 10th, 2024. The worst day of my life. The absolute worst day of my life. I'm not even going to debate that. I'm not even going to pull the whole, oh, worst day of my life so far. No. The worst day of my life. That's when things all went downhill. That is when... Things were said, and I said some things that almost landed me into a loony bin. And I'd be lying to you if I said that 24 hours later... I may or may not have, that word that rhymes with my name, may or may not have thought about it heavily. To the point where I made a lot of phone calls. To the point where a lot of phone calls were made to me. And I had friends, my best friend, family, just about everybody. And I won't out there credit some of those people, but they know who they are if they find this video. They talked me out of it. But 
unfortunately, I wish, I wish I could say this story doesn't get worse, <laughs> but I'd be lying to you. I couldn't tell you exactly when, but there were two occasions. Once, back in January, and another time right around, I want to say, in March. And actually, I could probably give you an exact date of one in March. Uh, it was actually April. So, once in January, and once in April... 23rd, I think, was the date. I actually came very close to going through with it. Um, the first occasion, I had made the stupid decision of walking recklessly in the street. And decided if I get hit and left on the side of the road, so be it. That was not the greatest day. I proceeded to post on my story. Hinting by hinting, I mean I almost word for word said that I tried. <laughs> um, I fell into a very deep depression. I would go into work talking very little, if at all. I went from being the loud, fun to hang out with person at work to going to work, going home, and sleeping. And that was my cycle for a while. You know, and from like. 4.23 on to like you know on right around 4.23 4.24 somewhere around there that was probably the closest I ever came to meeting my friend Zoe for lack of a better term well I guess I wouldn't have met Zoe, but you get the idea. Um, but that was probably the closest I was to that point. The only thing that kept me from going through with it, and it wasn't necessarily... the idea of pain or the idea of regret or anything. It was just a simple just text message of hey we need a fifth person to play Rainbow. And I made whether you're, I mean, at the time I thought it was a stupid decision now, I don't know how I feel about that decision, but I made the decision to play Rainbow Six Siege instead, figuring, okay, I'll just play Rainbow and then do it later. Obviously, that didn't happen, but that's, yeah. And there's been multiple occasions up until now where I, again, I would be an absolute liar if I told you it's a thought that I haven't had recently, because I have. Even as recently as Saturday, I mean, 8.24. I mean, the big picture here, the reason I'm doing all these drawings and all this explanation, this all should hopefully explain why I've been gone. 
for the last year between trying to repair friendships that couldn't be repaired and throwing them away for one reason or another to trying to fix the only true relationship I've ever had because I mean the first two relationships I had the first one lasted a month the second one was lasted over the summer and that was pretty much it I mean this was damn near four years it would have been four years and um in a month in four days after that fatal text message well fatal to the relationship at least fatal text message however you want to put it that text message it would have been a month and four days and it would have been four years and between again that Everything I've gone through, all the trust issues I've had, just everything, the constant fights with my family, a bunch, there's a, so much stuff that I'm leaving out that I wish to leave out for the sake of, for my own sanity, and because I just don't want to go through it, but there have been a, let's just say there's been a lot of times where I thought that I wasn't going to make it past 2019 or 2020 especially yeah a little bit of 2021 not so much make it as in be alive because of that but there were points where I thought I was going to have to get crazy in another way to make sure things don't go south in the house I guess is the best way to put it um and it's not something that I really like to talk about necessarily. Um, it's just not like a fun topic for me to discuss, really. Um, and I'd like to keep that private. But between all of like the house drama, school, again, trying to fix friendships, trying to keep my relationship afloat, trying to you know keep myself afloat get myself behind the wheel you know it's all kind of led to this this is truly the reason why I have been gone for so long just all of this is the true reason why I've been so short, why I've been gone. Because my goal, the day I made the comeback video, was that I was going to upload more. I had a deck tech video ready where I was going to upload my new commander deck that I had just built that I was super proud of. And I built that deck because of my relationship, because we both liked magic. And... I was going to teach her how to play the deck because it was one of my favorite decks. And it's a deck that I will barely play now these days. Unless I absolutely have to go nuclear and play the deck because the deck reminds me of her. And there's a lot of things that I don't do anymore that I used to enjoy because they remind me of her. And... Again, just it's a combination of everything over the past five years, but the last year especially is the reason why I've been gone. And I've sought help. I went to therapy for a while. I tried talking to some people. I did so much to try to fix things even after the whole debacle, and then I know for a fact it only made things worse. Um, And I just... There's so many things I wish I could have done better in the last five years, but especially in the last two. There's so many things I wish I could have done better. And I know that I have taken in all of my anger and my depression and just everything out on so many people. And I want this video to have two messages here. I mean, 
message number one is simply just depression doesn't have depression doesn't have a definitive sign depression doesn't have a stereotype i know people that have had depression everyone thought that they were fine i a grand example i'll even give you i had a friend i mean him and i weren't great friends but we were pretty chill we used to play halo together back in the day you know, and we had a good time. I saw this dude out in public one day. Asked him how he was doing. Said he was doing great. You know, told me he had some stuff lined up. I was like, yo, that's pretty great. You know, I'm kind of just chilling. Asking them, you know, what their plans were the next few days. We were talking about hanging out and playing Halo. And next day I get a text message that he's gone. And I learned a week later he overdosed. Intentionally. You know, and a lot... It shocked me. It really opened my eyes and it shocked me. Because I... He was the last person I would have expected to do anything like that. Because in the back of my mind I'm thinking... You know... This dude, he was, uh, he reminded me of my friend Zoe so much. You know, he's very down to earth, very relaxed. He very, you know, made time for other people. Did, you know, things for other people. Always put other people before himself. Something that <laughs> reminds me of me. You know, I have a tendency to do that myself. But... This dude's here, and then 24 hours later, I'm getting a text message that he's gone. And nobody knows what happened, and then a week later, I learned that he OD'd. And I was just shook. And... A lot of people didn't expect out of me that I had it in me to do something... So uh, unthinkable for so many people. Like, a lot of people thought that I was just, you know, this person that I was happy go lucky, and, you know, I'm just overall a grand person to be around and nobody ever thought oh this guy's over here talking about that word that rhymes with my name like nobody for a second would have thought that and then all of a sudden I laid it all out for my family after the second time well the first time I laid it all out but the second time I laid it all even further and I've laid it out multiple times like, and it's sad and it's screwed up, but the multiple fights I've had with my family and my some of my friends, I've always made it a point that, you know, back in January, there was a chance we weren't having this fight today. <laughs> and it's fucked up. It really is. But... The other message I want to get out, and this one's going to be a little bit more personal, because I do want to address some people. I'm not going to address anyone here by name, to the best of my ability, but I do want to talk to some people, because there are some people that I feel like need to be, need to like, hear some things hear me say some things and just there's some people that I know aren't going to care what I have to say I know there's going to be some people that are going to hear this and they're going to blow it off like it's nothing 
And I know that I said this was going to be 30, 45 minutes, but it's, and it's been an hour. But there's just so much I needed to talk about. But to my friends and the people in the Lightning XD and Friends Discord server, I want to thank you guys so much for your love and support. From the people that I've hardly known, whether it's my time as a Devils fan or the people that have joined the server because of Overwatch League or one of the OG members of the server, the people that were there for the D&D campaign, the people that have just joined from Jersey Mike's or Dunkin' Donuts or wherever you may come from, I want to thank all of you so much for your love and support. Um, one person I do want to shout out, close friend, T1 Glistener Elf. I know I said I was going to say names, but this person deserves a shout out. Please go check out his channel. Um, really great dude. Very supportive. Very kind. Um, you're an absolute legend. Um, to my best friend, thank you for being there for me whether it was that day, fateful day whether it was you know just every moment from the good the bad the ugly especially the ugly and for what it's worth man I'm glad the ugly wasn't the end of our friendship because dude I would not forgive myself if that would have been it but thank you for everything bro i absolutely appreciate you man to any family possibly watching this video you've probably learned a lot about me in this video than you've ever learned throughout any of our conversations and throughout any of our fights <laughs> i'm sorry that this is the way you're learning about it as opposed to me outright telling you about it Although a good portion of it I know I've outright told you. I'm sorry for every outburst. Sorry for being short. And I'm especially sorry for almost, you know, that word that rhymes with my name twice <laughs> to everyone watching this video if this is your first impression of me I'm sorry that this is your first impression of me um now that I think about it, I don't necessarily think this video is going to go public. I mean, I'm probably going to post it public because screw it. But if this is your first impression of me, I'm sorry. Um, honest to God, if you ran into my channel somehow, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. But. It's just, it's been, it's been a ride. Just a few more people. I can get through it. To the people in Juliet Company, my gaming team, slash group, whatever you want to put it, thank you for being around. You know, you guys have been... A very supportive group you've kept me from saying and doing a lot of things that I would not have been proud of not like I would have been breathing to be proud of it but I do want to thank you guys a lot and whew, the hard part <laughs> I doubt you are watching this I doubt you even got this far into the video. But if you're somehow watching this, and you somehow have made it to this part of the video, 
I do want to address you. Yes, you. You know who you are. I'm just want to say I know that it's not going to mean much. I know that you've heard this a countless amount of times throughout the past four years. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry I flopped on every promise that I couldn't keep. I'm sorry that I flopped everything we had. I'm sorry for any pain that I caused during and after. I'm sorry that things didn't work out the way we both wanted them to. And I'm sorry for the moments that I was selfish. There were a lot of moments that I was selfish, and I'm sorry for the moments that I was selfish. I wish I could have been less selfish at times. I wish I could have thought about myself and been selfish at the times that I needed to be selfish. And I wish I could say I've gotten better. <laughs> Um, and that, you know, should things work out in the future, I would do better. I wish I could say that, but I can't say that with confidence right now. That I would do better. And the reason I can't say that with confidence isn't because of one thing or another. It's just, I know... I don't trust myself and that's my biggest thing and that's a reason why I have isolated myself from a lot of things you know I go to work and then I immediately go home I don't do any hanging out in public very often and if I do I'm usually with one person or not hanging out in public very long I don't like going out in public anymore it hurts quite frankly it hurts to go out in public lately and it's my fault you know I have gotten better physically we won't talk about the appointment that I have um where I won't be physically all right um tomorrow as of me recording this video but you know there's a lot of improvements to my life I'm trying to make there's a lot of improvements to just just me in general that I want to make and I wish you could be here to see those improvements I wish you could be around to share these moments with me and I'm sorry you're no longer around to share these moments with me and I understand that a good portion of it is my fault um, if you are somehow by some way watching this video I don't expect you to comment I don't expect you to text me I don't expect anything. I don't want this video to be a long apology, a long explanation to you. I want it to be a long explanation to anyone. I expect nothing from anyone. But the only thing, the other thing I really have to say is that I wish we could have talked things out. But... On the positive note, I have, and this is me no longer addressing anybody other than the general audience. I mean, I've done, I've, I guess I've been making lots of self improvements and been trying to make lots of self improvements. You know, my time in at 
my new job has given me lots of different avenues to go moving forward. I mean, all I have to do is get inside of my car, which I'm not going to attempt to draw a car like I was just about to there. I'm literally just going to write car, you know, but once I'm able to drive this thing called a car, I have made connections at Jersey Mike's and my next step is to go to school. Now, not just any school, however, I have two routes that I could go. And one of these routes is a route that I wished to go a long time ago. And it's a route that I still want to make work if I at all possibly can. And it's a route that I cannot draw <laughs> effectively. Um, so we're kind of just going to wing it here. But one of these routes I could potentially take, given I have made some pretty decent friends, I'd say, at Jersey Mike's, is I have con reconsidered a job in emergency services, EMS, being an EMT or paramedic. It's something that I thought I would be really good at, something that I considered for a while. Even when I was in college, I thought, man, sitting around taking these random courses feels kind of stupid when I could actually be doing something with my life. And it's something that I considered. And I have spoken to some people who work in different, e under, you know, under different EMS umbrellas, and they've told me how to, you know, get in and, uh, you know, go through basic, all of that good stuff, where I could, how I easily I could get a job, you know, where I can go, websites, how to apply, what I need, things like that, you know, different places that offer training and whatnot, and I've just, it's something that I've considered, and... I don't want to call it my plan A because I don't have a hard set plan A, but it's a route that I'm more likely considering because it's, again, it's something that I really thought I'd always be really good at and it's something I considered and despite everything I've gone through, one thing that, pardon my D&D &D talk here, but I have a very high constitution score. I guess you could say, when it comes to, like, I don't know, things that would, like, no a normal person would see and they would, like, crack under pressure, like, a dead body. Like, yeah, I'd be spooked, but I'd be able to, I, I feel like I would be able to react really quickly and things like that, or, like, you know, someone's having a heart attack, or, you know, little things even, especially, like, we're at Jerry's house for the 80th time because, you know, Jerry doesn't want to take his medication or whatever. You know, just, it's something I feel like I would be good at. It's an avenue I want to explore to see if it's something I truly want to do because it's something I really wanted to do years ago and it kind of just fell through because of this limitation here. But another one, which kind of sort of has the same limitation but not necessarily... And it's something else that I'm fairly good at, you know, is, you know, computers. You know, working with computers, whether it's like an IT job or, you know, whatever it may be. You know, I've always been pretty, I wouldn't say tech savvy, but I... I know, like, the basics and maybe some, like, things outside of the basics when it comes to computers. And it's just... It's obviously, it's something that I'm fairly good at. I mean, I'm not good at drawing, I can tell you that much. You've probably figured that out in this hour-long video. But, you know... I don't know how to explain it. I'm just... I really like me I really like messing around with computers 
and seeing like and like testing the limitations of even my own laptop which i know i shouldn't and that's probably a big reason why my laptop doesn't work very well anymore it's because i've been known to test the limitations of this damn thing time and time again um and i also just really like whenever some of my family has a problem with their computer or they have a problem with their phone that they have or even if it's something as simple as like Wi-Fi is not connecting to my phone. Is the Wi-Fi button on? Oh, yeah, that would help. You know, things like that. You know, or figuring out how to work a phone. I mean, I will not touch an iPhone. So right now, can't do iPhones. You have an iPhone and you need help? Cough, cough, my little brother. Don't want to tell you. Sorry, I'm an Android guy. Couldn't, I could tell you, you know, how to get through an Android. You know, no problem. You need help with an Android? Fine. You need help with an iPhone? Go get, go find someone else. <laughs> but like, I really like messing with computers. I really like, again, you know, just, I only really know the basics and the grand scheme of things, but I really just, I like doing stuff with computers. And that's another, I guess, another route that I've considered taking. And I think that would be, Another good route to take, but my point is that I have options. But at the end of the day, obviously, you know, I guess the big question would be, well, what about this channel? What about, you know, what are you going to do with your YouTube channel? You know, ha 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 ha. What are you going to do with the channel? Well, the channel's not going anywhere. Whether I'm, you know, going to go join the fucking nerd brigade or whatever you want to call it, or... I'm going to go save lives. I don't want the channel to go anywhere. I can't promise that I'm going to go anywhere. Just you don't know what life is going to do to you. I learned that the hard way multiple times. I've even considered that I would know what's next for me. I mean, I just sat here and gave you a crash course on my life story from 2018 to now. And I know what you're thinking. This is your a crash course of the last five years and this is an hour long video. Yes, believe me, this is a crash course. I've left out so many painful details. Whether it's stuff I don't want to go through or the extended universe. I mean, I could talk about the Baycord Champions League and the rise and fall and rise and fall and rise and the current downfall of the Baycord Champions League. I could talk about the original Juliet Company group and the rise and fall and the rise of Juliet Company. I could go over so much just in the past five years or the past three years alone. But yeah, that's in an almost an hour and a half why I've been gone. A brief considering how further I could because I mean, this could be a four hour long video if I wanted it to be. I wanted this to be 30 to 45 minutes and it's been almost an hour and a half. But again, I'm sorry to everyone I hurt. Friends, family, loved ones, ex-fiancés. I'm sorry to each and every one of you for hurting you one way or another. And I apologize for any way that any of you get hurt watching this video. But everyone wanted the truth I wanted to give out the truth I didn't think anyone could handle it but here's the truth here's this is exactly why I've been gone for so damn long why I have went ahead and just isolated myself why I've done a lot of things that have 
hurt a lot of people. Some of those things I wish some people could understand and talk to me with talk through with me through it all, but whether it's exes or ex friends, it is what it is. But I want to thank any friends and family that are watching this video. I want to thank everyone just in general for watching this video and making it through this long video. And I'm not going to sit here and be like, you know, I'm a survivor. I'm not going to sit here and say that I, you know, was reborn or any of that. I mean, I truthfully, I don't believe I've done any of that. I'm still the same person I was. I just made it through three tragedies in the span of seven months. Well, one tragedy and two potential tragedies in the span of seven months. And... I was hoping at the end of this month to release a song. It's probably not going to be until mid next month, but I want to release a song that will hopefully open some eyes and explain in less than an hour's worth of time how I feel. And I'm sure it's going to open a lot of eyes. And that, trust me when I say that song, will be a crash course. <laughs> Compared to this. That's the that's the real crash course. At least I still have my jokes. And at least I can still laugh. If I can't laugh and make jokes anymore. That's when there's going to be a problem. But. That is it. No more crying for now. I'm going to be doing plenty of crying at the dentist. Um, not because I'm at the dentist, but because of the amount of money I'm going to spend at the dentist. Um, but I love each and every one of you watching this video. And I am going to leave some notes down in the description that I want everyone to please check out in case you know somebody that's in the same situation as me um i mean it's just it takes one one phone call i mean that's all it takes like if you're afraid somebody is you know in a bad spot just call them talk to them um and obviously there's this number here a number that has talked me out of some things you know once another time indirectly you know and not to their fault, but it indirectly led to me. It led to the second time. Again, to no fault of the person that was helping me. They did everything they could. It was just... I won't go into detail why, but that was arguably worse than the first time. Because, yes, the first time, I mean, it was fresh in my mind. But the second time, I thought I was getting over it. And just when I thought I was getting better, it only got worse. Um, but I'll also leave this number in the description as well as some other resources that people are going to need. Because I guarantee you you have a friend or a family member or someone that's going through something and 
your phone call or your text message could save their life. And I really believe that because I've done that for people and I won't name those people. I hope that one of those people are watching this video and I know for a fact one person in particular isn't watching this video, but if you're somehow watching for what it's worth, even though we don't talk anymore and even though things have gone downhill, I'm still glad I sent that text message that saved you. Because that would have broken me, sure, but that would have broken so many people. And I think that's the only thing that's kept me here and kept me from doing something stupid. Is the fact that I, I know in the back of my mind that it's not going to hurt me. But that would arguably be the last selfish thing I ever did. It would prove so many people right, so many people that I wish I couldn't, I don't, I, I don't want to prove so many of these people right, but there's one person in particular I wish I could have proved wrong, and I feel like by making this video, by still being here and being able to make this video, in a way I'm proving this person wrong, and that's not my goal in my life right now is to prove this person wrong but indirectly if that's what I do so be it I wish things could have been better I wish I didn't have to prove myself to another person even though I don't really have to in the back of my mind I have to but I'm sorry to everyone watching, to friends, family, ex-fiancés, ex-friends, I'm sorry. Sorry for the selfish text messages, the selfish comments, the selfish fights, the two selfish acts that would have made the last five years look like nothing. <laughs> this was not an easy hour and a half to talk about. I think I'm now going to turn the mic off, turn the recording off, and go cry for a little bit. So, again, I just... I'm, I'm going to stop rambling... Thank you. I love you all. And I don't know if I want to talk about this any further, at least right now. But thank you. From the deep, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for taking up an hour and a half of your time, letting me take up an hour and a half of your time, whether you've listened to this video all in one sitting or you've listened to it here and there, thank you. You know, for what it's worth, at least I'm worth your hour and a half. You know, it feels good to be worth someone's hour and a half. I'm now going to turn the mic off, go cry a little bit, and sleep for the night. It is 2.35 in the morning. I have a, an appointment in exactly 12 hours, which means no sleep for me. <sighs> Thank you. And until we meet again, for... Possibly an exciting video that isn't a short me getting an ace or some dumb kill or whatever. Thank you. You're the greatest. And I'll see you soon.